Tordenschuld is a member of what we believe is the world's oldest active fishing fleet. This boat is a halibut schooner, and that is a unique vessel type uh, developed in this part of the world, the Pacific Northwest. And there was a fleet of these boats designed specifically to fish for the world's largest flatfish, the halibut. Most of these vessels are either over 100 years old or approaching their 100th birthdays, and most of them are still fishing. Northwest Seaport has added Tordenschuld to its historic fleet to represent our commercial fishing industry and the wooden shipbuilding industry that produced that and tell that story. It's a great story of sustainability, where our food comes from, about our maritime past, our maritime present and future. It's an important tale. The maritime industry and the Seattle waterfront are the backbone of what Seattle is. That's what built Ballard, that's what built Seattle. And it's great to have uh, the schooner here at the Northwest Seaport so that people can learn about that. Well, here it is, George. The newest museum ship in the Northwest Seaport fleet. The 106-year-old Tordenschuld. 100 years of fishing on there. We're gonna get to shore to a lot of visitors. Let's go aboard and take a look. This fishing vessel, Tordenschuld, has a wonderful name because the character it's named after is a story in himself. Peter Janssen Vessel Tordenschuld was a Danish naval hero from the 1690s. He only lived to age 30, but he, in that short time, made a real name for himself in Scandinavia, capturing entire Swedish fleets. And he was given the nom de guerre Tordenschuld, Thunder Shield, from the Danish king because he was such a force in Scandinavian naval warfare. And way over here in the United States, Norwegian immigrants and Danish immigrants decided to name their boat after this legendary naval hero. And this boat really partly tells the story of the deep connection between the Scandinavian fishing community here and their Scandinavian roots back in Norway. These boats were copies of New England schooners. There were three that were brought around to Seattle in uh, 1888. They were sailing schooners and they weren't very successful due to Northwest conditions but the introduction of a gas engine started making it a little more feasible to actually catch halibut. The Seattle halibut fleet were all built between 1911 and the 1920s, and the Tordenschuld being the oldest one that's still in existence. And they were remarkable in that they were owner-operator boats. Fishermen could band together, get financing, and be able to actually purchase a boat and fish as independent fishermen. That changed the dynamics of the fishery tremendously. In those days, they were fishing with dories. They'd carry six dories aboard, which were 16-foot skiffs, and you have 15 men on board this boat. 12 fishermen, a captain, a cook, and an engineer. They all had to help in launching the dories and retrieving the dories, and these boats went out and fished independently. Well, this was a really dangerous fishery, as you're out in the high seas in 16-foot boats, and it was hardly a schooner that didn't have a loss of life. Dory fishing was basically outlawed in the 1930s because it was so dangerous and they developed technology to haul and set from the schooner itself. You had a dirty, which was a power winch, which was mechanically driven, that you could use to, to retrieve the gear with. And the gear is a traditional long line gear, which is a line about the diameter of your finger with hooks spaced every 18 feet or so. And these hooks are baited by hand and the gear is anchored to the bottom. They deploy the anchors, buoys off the port side, and all the hooks line over the stern. But then they bring it up here on the starboard side. And you bring the line over the roller into the power girdy, which is actually what's pulling it up. And then when a halibut comes up alongside the boat, the guy standing at the rail kicks the hydraulics off with his knee there and stops the winch, gaff the fish with a big hook, and you drag it up onto the deck. You've right. seen those photos of them, they're huge. They're enormous fish. I would not want to fight an angry 300 pound halibut onto the deck. That'd be something. Those guys are tough. Yeah. yeah. Then they bring the fish up here and dress them out on the hatch cover, gut them, and then send them down the hatch into the hold for icing. Oh, the fish hold. Want to climb down there? Yeah, I do. It's huge. <laughs> you can hold a lot of fish down here. 90,000 pounds. 
This boat has actually participated in every major fishery on the West Coast except for salmon. During World War II, her service was especially noteworthy when they fished for sharks. During that time, they were using the livers from sharks to process certain vitamins that they believed would help with night vision for airmen and sailors. So shark livers became a very valuable commodity. The biggest money ever made fishing on the Tordenshul was made in shark fishing. The story is that the cook made one trip and made $13,000. He bought a lot in Ballard and built a three-bedroom brick house from the proceeds of one trip, fishing shark. After World War II, Tordenskold became the first boat with a radio on it on, on the commercial fleet. And I don't know who he talked to because he was the only guy out there with a radio, but um, Carl Servold, who was skippering it, became known as the Voice of the Pacific. And he had that boat until the early 70s. In 1979, the boat's third owner, Marvin Jurdy, purchased the vessel along with his business partner, Per Odegaard. And they fished halibut and black cod with this boat until 2012, which was Tordenschuld's last fishing season. It was time for the boat to retire, and Marvin Jurdy decided Northwest Seaport was the place to go, and it's just been a great gift to the community. It was pretty much my idea. I just like the idea of an organization that's trying to keep some of that maritime history alive in Seattle. I'd like it if in, in 50 years, this boat could be in, the, in as good a shape as it's in right now. And I just felt that giving it to the seaport was the easiest way to accomplish that. Northwest Seaport's mission is to preserve and interpret maritime heritage materials, specifically ships, to the general public. We acquired the Tordenschuld in 2017 to represent the fishing industry. Now we have an operational vessel that we can take the public out on for educational programs, boat shows, and just to show the flag. Most of the time, unless it's really bad weather, you wouldn't really need these. Another important part of our mission at Northwest Seaport is to provide job skills training and just generally familiarizing younger people with opportunities that are available in maritime industry. And that is an opportunity we offer through our museum ships, which are all historic work boats. I really enjoy these boats, and I get a lot out of it being a volunteer. It benefits me because it gives me a little sea time on these boats, and I can put that toward my Merchant Mariner ticket. Northwest Seaport's volunteer program is available to anybody who wants to get their hands on historic vessels, including the Tordenschuld. Whether it's painting or opening up the vessels for visitors to come aboard and learn a little bit about a vessel that they've never heard of before. Anybody who is interested in volunteering with Northwest Seaport, I would definitely encourage. All right. Quite a boat, isn't it? It is. This one's going to be really fun as we bring people on here, get underway and start going places with her. One of the most exciting volunteer opportunities we have with Tordenschuld is that this boat is operational and we need a crew. So we are putting together a volunteer crew to operate this boat. And it's a great opportunity for people to get to be a part of something so big, something that's been around for so long, be part of this hundred year story and these vessels and the whole history they represent. <laughs>